Hello and welcome back to Cryptid Crush. We'll be continuing where we left off, which, if you recall, is on day two of the story. Um, so last we saw, Robin was trying to help um, Mike, who is possessing her bear phone, uh, to try to see if you know he can get his body back or at least some semblance of memories, so that he could be at least a little bit whole. Because right now he he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't remember anything, and that causes him to act out, I, I suppose. That's that's what I'm getting, you know? And he seems like a good person, but um, without his memories, he just has pranks to fall back on. <laughs> I mean, he's a ghost, I guess. And um, they went to the library to see if they could find any information, but unfortunately, only pamphlets and a goat ma'am. <laughs> and... Um, they also went to a coffee shop, or cafe, I guess, where apparently that's where Jamie works. And they met a frogman. Later on, they met him again at a creek or like a pond, I guess. And he was trying to see if he could get the attention of a, a goddess that he says that um, bit him or something. And apparently he doesn't like being a monster or at least a cryptid. Um, he's very much not into this whole thing. Also, the Edith, I believe her name is Oz, and Thursday are scheming something, I think. You know, something interesting. Also, uh, uh, also August, the werewolf dude that, you know, um, that we ran over, <laughs> um, he's fine, and apparently he's very bashful. And he was, he managed to um, mend things with, um, what's his face? The Mothman, Atlas. So yeah, we're gonna continue and see what happens. And I think we get to see August again. So yay, I like August, he's cute. By cute, I mean he's hot, I'm just kidding. Lying on the floor, you stare up at the ceiling, your heart racing in your chest. You hear a knock at the door. <sighs> and another knock at the door. Are you going to get that? Absolutely fuming, you leap to your feet, marching through the kitchen and glare through the peephole. Whoever it is, they're blocking the peephole. You open the door. Good morning. You're relieved it's a friendly face, but irked at being woken up at such an early hour. Couldn't you have just texted me? I felt like... Any more texting might be rude, since your phone is now home to a ghost. Mike's not a digipet. Can I come in? I brought breakfast. Jamie reaches into their day bag and pulls out a fragrant loaf of pumpkin bread alongside a plate of muffins. You look at the muffins. All is forgiven. You step aside, letting the devil into your apartment. Jamie's horned clunks against the door frame as they walk inside. I want to write August a sympathy card. Jamie strolls through the kitchen and places their bag on the table. Reaching inside, they pull out a fistful of markers and a blank card. That's not a bad idea. But where do I start? Mm, a drawing? A picture is worth a thousand words. Just draw whatever's in your heart. My heart? Squatting down, Jamie pops the lid off of one of the markers and begins drawing on the card. You try to peek over Jamie's shoulder at the doodle, but they sheepishly block your view. Can I see? Not yet. Perfect. We should be good to go. Do you know where August lives? Mm, we can walk there together. He lives just up the road. Sure. We can talk car damages on the way. The muffins weren't enough. <laughs> I thought you said that they were just up the road, not a hike. Would you prefer we drive? And the death machine? I wouldn't trust driving across the street. It's not that broken. August's cabin is exactly how you'd expect. In the middle of the woods, rustic, overgrown, but sturdy. The furniture on the porch looks hand-carved. Potted ferns resting on each step leading to the front door. The only thing out of place is August, shovel in hand, digging a big hole. 
As the two of you approach, August hops up and calls out to a kid, kicking wood chips in the nearby flower bed. Junebug, you're gonna get splinters! Why don't you come over here and say hi? I'm busy. Morning! Look who's back to normal. How are you feeling? Just peachy. If you're looking for Atlas, he's asleep in the attic. Atlas lives in your attic? Well, attic might be the wrong word. It's more of a lock. We got fairy lights and everything. Oh, that sounds lovely. Atlas is a serial couch surfer. He'll crash wherever he can fit his feelers into. <laughs> oh boy! That lad's down on his luck, that's all. You called him a pest. Man. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. How do you get stuck with Atlas anyway? He's an old family friend. We're happy to have him. We brought you a card and pumpkin bread. Oh, wow. This smells great. And a card too? Yes, please open it. That's awfully kind of you. Tearing open the envelope, August pulls out the get well card and opens it. August's eyebrows furrow as he stands there, staring down at the little card, a concerned look on his face. Are you... bleeding out your eyes? If that's how you interpret it. Who's the little blue guy on your head? That's my soul. Damn. I didn't know that you were a baker and an artist. That's so cool. Jamie grins. August chuckles, tucking the card into his back pocket. Thanks, you two. August throws an arm around you and Jamie, giving you both a friendly side hug. Hope you get better soon. You give Jamie a gentle nudge. Yeah. Jamie jumps and angrily looks around only to realize it's a puny red-headed girl yanking on their tail. She looks up at Jamie and asks, Is that a mask? No, it's my skull. Is your brain in there? It should be. Can I see? I would die. Hey, you rascal. This is my daughter, June. Did you know octopuses have nine brains? In their arms? June kicks the devil's shin. Tack, you're it. She runs off, yelling and flailing her arms around. What? I'm sorry for scaring you. Have you ever played tag? You're supposed to chase her around. Yeah, it's all in good fun. Okay, sure, that sounds easy enough. I can have fun. Eh, they'll be fine. Glancing at the large shovel August is leaning against, you raise an eyebrow. There's no shrubs or saplings around needing to be planted. Uh, what's with the hole? I'm doing some yard work. Uh-huh. I find it relaxing. This feels like a werewolf thing. I'm certain it's a normal human thing. Maybe if you're a grave digger. Grave digger? <laughs> August tumbles into the hole. Get a load of this beefy boy digging around the dirt. It's great to meet you, bud. You're haunted? Double haunted, actually. And you're okay with this? For now, at least. <laughs> I can't believe a werewolf's fallen for me. Did I come on too strong? August hoists himself up out of the pit, rubbing his back while he winces. Oh no, I got the message. August, meet Madhouse Mike. He's a lot. Oh, like the radio guy. I'm a ghost in need of a man with a shovel. W wait, you remember me? Vaguely, but that paranormal stuff makes me queasy, so I try to avoid it. That... that's okay. It's not for everyone. One sec. Junebug! Time to get ready for school! June? No biting! Help me! What is your plan exactly? You're gonna find my body and my hat too. 
That bastard's gotta have it. Mike, that feels wrong. Is this really how you'll find closure? Sure, if closure involves shovels and felonies. We're not doing that. Fine. I'll do it myself. Give me your phone. I'm not giving you my phone. Grrr. Okay. Look, Mike, I know you're desperate, but you can't force people to do what you want. Like drinking poison. You've got a lot of nerve, Meatball. Seriously, though, is Atlas okay? He's alright, but why don't you ask him? Just shove me in a meat grinder. Don't be so traumatic, dude. If you apologize, I'm sure it'll clear the air. Meat grinder! Eh. Well, thanks for stopping by, you three. Not a problem. Yeah, it's always nice to get to know your neighbors. Could you give us a tour of the graveyard, neighbor? Since we're new in town. Why there in particular? <laughs> it's for my spiritual well-being. That is a rather important journey. I admire a ghost taking charge of his afterlife. Yuck. See? All I had to do was ask. Eh. I'd be happy to help. You're not creeped out? Nah, I hear it's a great spot for mushroom picking. Not alone, of course, but that's just common sense. So, it's settled. How about I swing by and pick you up after work? Since it's a bit of a drive. Sounds like a plan. What about you, Jam Slam? Feeling adventurous? As thrilling as creeping around a cemetery sounds, I'll have to pass. I'd feel bad leaving Atlas out. You decide to take the long way home. While you're walking home, you spot two figures, recognizing one as Goat Ma'am, who's pacing around. I wake up to find half my zucchini patch has been chewed to bits. Some hooligan's been ransacking my garden. Sounds like a giant woodchuck. The second figure is a tall woman dressed in a nautical blouse. A woodchuck? Wearing a coat and trousers? Ha! Says the talking goat. Unrelated. You stroll into view, catching the goat ma'am's eye. She greets you happily while the woman looks on. Good morning, dear. Have you seen a fellow with the most dreadful posture wandering this street? Oh my! Someone's been stealing rocks and plucking flowers from the Partsnip's garden. Goat ma'am! I'm not calling you by your wizard title, Parsnip. That's too silly, even for me. <laughs> it's endearing. You don't see me wandering around calling myself human ma'am. That's because you're not a creative person. Phew! Uh-huh. So, have you seen him? Sounds familiar. I did stroll by a guy skipping rocks yesterday. Into the river. You think back to the stone Robbie gave you and frown. It's still in your coat pocket. Can you steal rocks? Maybe. Yeah? Noted. The woman holds her hand out for a shake. I'm Tessie. It's nice to meet you. You reach out and the two of you shake hands. Her grip is firm but gentle. Robin. Goat ma'am. <laughs> Tessie chuckles. Mm -hmm. I'd better get going. You should swing by the lake sometime. And let frog legs know. Purple lupin flowers are my favorite. Tessie smirks and gives goat ma'am a big pat on the back before sauntering off on her merry way. Hey, wait a second. What is it, dear? Uh, um, never mind. Now where's your ghostly companion? I do hope those pamphlets were helpful. Ah, yeah, thanks. Meanwhile, face down in the dirt is the self-proclaimed frog prince, sprawled out like he's giving the earth a hug. A lone zucchini rests within claw's reach. A weapon, perhaps? This is starting to feel like a crime scene. 
Hey, you okay? Craning his head to one side, Rob opens his glossy fish eyes and squints up at the bug staring down at him. Maybe he's overheating? Atlas reaches over and touches Robbie's fluffy hat. The fishman doesn't budge. He plucks the hat off the fishman. Robbie rips the hat out of Atlas's grasp and plops it onto his head. What are you doing? I thought you were dying. Are you alright? Oh. I tripped. You see these webbed feet? They're shit. I'm like an ugly featherless penguin. Rob straightens up before slouching back down again. I hear ya. All I've got are these wings and these chicken legs. He eyes the Mothman and frowns. So, you're cosplayer? What? Cause that's one striking interpretation of the Mothman. Wasn't he some sensationalized hoax? But hey, whatever sells bumper stickers! You can't sling words like that around. Hoax? Yes, it's insulting. He's standing right here. And stand up straight. So it's not a costume. Whoa. Have you been living under a rock? A rock under a rock. I see. Wanna talk over coffee while I catch you up to speed? You seem like a real fish out of water. Okay. Then I said, Terry, get out of town. Who knew opossums could be so chatty? Haha, <laughs> only when it gossips. Hey, Atlas. What's up, fly boy? Just chilling with my good buddy. Hello. You look at the ghost expectingly. He's going to say something, and you know it can't be good. Atlas, I... I just wanted to say... What a rebound! You got a thing for green guys in hats? That... That was a question from your Darkwasher interview, wasn't it? I, it was? And you thought I wouldn't notice. <laughs> Looks like Mike's out of material. Atlas's eyes flicker a sharp green with a faint glow. Ugh, you look terrible. Your face is gonna get stuck like that, you know. Have you been taking care of yourself? Oh, I know! A riddle would perk you right up. Is this a prank? No? Then piss off! You got it, boss. Atlas. Yeah, we're gonna wanna call a doctor for this guy. Or a priest. I do it myself, but I can't figure out how to open doors. Ugh. With a yelp, Atlas's eyes twitch and shift back to a bright red. We're taking you to the clinic. Rob, get him. Bad idea. You know Edith experiments on people, right? In the hospital basement. No way. So, unless you want to see me pinned to a corkboard, I'd advise against it. I don't know, that feels like a stretch. Do you have any proof? I dare you to sneak down there and see yourself. Hmm... Sounds boring. I'm interested in phantoms, not Frankensteins. What if you visited Goatman? She knows a thing or two about ghosts. That's not a bad idea. You should donate Madhouse to her collection of antiquity. No. Ah, uh, don't worry, I'm just joking. I'll talk to Goat Ma'am after I run some errands. I gotta prove I'm the greatest stay-at-home rat man around. At least I'd be banished to the crawl space. Taking a page from Taro's playbook, you spend the afternoon loafing around the house. After a lazy dinner, you wander outside where you meet up with August. August drives a blue pickup truck plastered in scattershot of feel-good bumper stickers. Someone's scrawled wash me on the dusty back window. The interior is littered with crayons, coloring books, a cup of mystery soda, and a single palm tree air freshener dangling off the rear view mirror. You slide it to the passenger seat and the back cushion suddenly drops, giving you a mini heart attack. August quickly grabs a seat and snaps it back into place. Sorry, I forgot I broke that. How? Gus, why does your license plate say beach bait? 
Don't worry about it. Do you have an aux cord? No, but you could check my CD stash under the sun visor. You flip the sun visor down and start digging through August's music collection. Oh, it got awfully bright all of a sudden. Someone must have turned a bright light on. The CDs are much easier to read. Classical music, spa ambience, baby sing along songs. You don't want to listen to any of this. You look over and see two massive headlights glaring in the side mirror. You shield your eyes at an imposing crimson logger truck riding the blue pickup's rear. Don't brake check. The truck swerves into the opposite lane and veers past you. Glancing at the cargo makes you uneasy. You can't quite make the shape out in the darkness, but you swear it's squirming. August shoves his hand out the driver's window and flips the truck off as it disappears around a bend. The pickup rolls through the graveyard's broken gates, its bright headlights beaming across the abandoned lot. The three of you hop out and August twirls his jangly car keys strung on a seashell lanyard. He whistles. Phew! We aren't driving back that way. We could have been steamrolled. Gravel crunches under your shoes, your flashlight shining over the mossy headstones. The singing crickets and icy wind brings a gloomy peace to these old resting grounds. Hurry up, slowpokes! Maybe keep it down. I'm sure there's spirits here trying to rest. You got a heartbeat? Yeah, last I checked. Then stay in your lane. Grr. Grr. Yeah, sure, I mean, you're the ghost here. Oh, bug off. Gus is trying to help you. Did he bring the shovels? We're not doing that. I'm starting to doubt this spiritual well-being thing. What do you actually want, Mike? I, uh... I'm searching for myself. Literally speaking? I wouldn't get your hopes up. The three of you start looking around, hoping to find a stone mark with a mic. I found a mic! August calls out from a grave marker, gesturing you to come over. That's not me. I know if it were me. What's your last name? Madhouse. No, I'm being serious. My name is Madhouse. Look for a guy named Madhouse. You don't remember, do you? What kind of loser forgets their own name? Sorry. I'll keep it down. Let's come back when we've got more information. You want to leave? It's getting pretty late. Then let's split up. We'll cover more ground that way. Madhouse blinks out of sight. Be careful. I want to go home. We can leave, right? I mean, Mike's in his natural habitat. Like releasing a mountain lion back into the wild. I couldn't do that to him. Well, you've got more patience than I do. I nearly freaked. That explained the ears. Well, tour's over. I need to make a phone call. August strolls off the path, fishes his cell phone out of his pocket, and dials up a number. How's things? I wanted to check in. Atlas, the oven is off limits. You invited Jamie over? Ugh, okay, just keep me posted. And tell Junebug Papa loves you. Not you, June! Yes, you too, Atlas. Hello? Anybody home? I gotta be lying around here somewhere. Maybe they were right. Mike's got no clue of what he's doing here. Or why anyone bothered. Hey, cutie. Place your headstone next to mine. Let's spend an eternity together, darling. Go to hell. I saw him first. You freaks are the reason the dead don't speak. Please pay them no mind. They'll be gone by morning. Huh? Now please allow me. Madhouse feels a spectral hand touch the visor of his hat. This memento is rather precious to you. Hats off. Uh... I can't win that. Uh... 
the hand gives Mike's cap a gentle tug and tears it off the little ghost's head. He shrieks and reality is torn from him. Mike? You look like hell. Where have you been, bedhead? Mike's standing half asleep slumped against the studio doorframe. He's face to face with the producer who's clicking a pen in her right hand, annoyed. Is it that obvious? Let's just say we're lucky this is radio. Have you been getting enough sleep? They both know the answer. Sure, but uh, what about you, Debs? Yeesh, there's not enough hours in the day. Especially with our holiday special just around the corner. Boss wants things wrapped up in real tidy bow. I'm holding out for this year's holiday bonus. If we even get one. Debbie takes a sharp breath. Huh, let's focus on you, okay? You're the star here. I just schedule interviews and push your buttons. Aw, oh, come on. You got me this gig. Mistletoe Michael wouldn't even exist without you. You do look good in the Santa costume. They both laugh. Now give us an outro. Like, on the spot? Boss's orders. That's it? Your mind clung to this. No fight, no tragedy, but a boring day job. They'll make anyone a cryptid these days. <laughs> Madhouse chokes, straining against the crushing grip of this invisible foe. He squeezes his eyes shut and blips back into your phone. But nothing happens. Madhouse strayed too far. Oz shambles through the graveyard like a zombie, a tired zombie. He plucks a toad still here and a moss chunk there, per Edith's orders. Squeezing his eyes shut, he stifles a big yawn. He steps into something and nearly slips. Oz lifts his boot and peels whatever it is off the bottom of his shoe. A mushroom? No, it's a melted baseball cap. Oz scoffs, tossing the hat aside. Gross. Mike, where are you? You come running, skidding to a stop as you nearly crash into the howler. You scream at the sight of, oh, it's just Oz, lurking around in the dark alone in the graveyard. Just like you. Except he's a monster and built like a sycamore tree. I'm sorry. You. August marching through the dark paces behind you. What does Edith want? Did she send you to screw with me? August's eyes the sky with suspicion. Where's the bird? <sighs> Oz rolls his eyes. Did something happen between you two? All Oswald cares about is his so-called favors. I'll pay my stupid bill, so quit hounding me. Oz lifts a finger and August pauses mid-rant. Oh, you go ahead. August waits patiently as Oz writes something on his little clipboard. He's shimming over and glancing at the note. Oz holds it out for August to read. Oswald says I'm right. He is horribly wrong, and he'll be fleeing to Alaska post-haste. Mother of- Oz stomps on the wolfman's foot. <laughs> you don't have time for this. Turning away, you zone out the bickering and wave your phone around trying to pick up a signal. A red splotch catches your eye. Strolling over, you squat down and pluck a hat off the ground. It's Madhouse's hat. It's hot in your hands, cackling with a supernatural energy. Uh, guys? An eerie hush falls over the resting grounds. You look back to find the two cryptids brawling like monsters. Oz lunges, aiming for the wolfman's neck. <clears throat> but the sleek face mask blocks his bite. August retaliates by chomping the howler's arm, shaking him out like a chew toy. What the hell are you two doing? We're not supposed to be fighting each other. August! The monsters freeze up. August spits the howler's arm out of his mouth with a disgruntled whine. Both of you! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oz folds his arms and sulks. What were we doing again? I can't get a hold of Madhouse. Sure, we split up, but I didn't think he'd disappear. I knew this was a bad idea. Give me that hat you're holding. It's Mike's, right? 
I'll slew them out. What? You've got a sixth sense? Oz reaches into his overshirt and bumps into the wolfman. Nah, Ghost got this ozone sort of smell to him. Oz draws a silver dagger from his coat and cuts through the air before him. Eek! Oh god, is it a fight? Mr. Walker appears. What is that thing? Why, you're rather rude. Not that it matters now. You'll all be gone by morning. Oz hisses through his clenched teeth. Uh, hey, that lantern's giving me the creeps. It reeks. Oz lunges, darting to the side before bashing the hilt of his dagger against the lantern. Silver stab. I have to get a five. Success. Oz stabs Lantern for two damage and flicks shadowy threads off the tip of his blade. Oz looks to you for further instruction. Um... I don't know what you do, dude. <laughs> lower its defense? Lower guts to lower physical defense and lower brains to lower stab. Okay. I'm in no rush. Madhouse is tethered to your phone, right? What if you tried calling him back? Hmm. Oh, I have to get a seven. So I have to roll a three then. I mean, not a three, uh, a six. Yes. Robin angles his phone at the lantern and a wild bolt of green lightning spikes through the air dealing two damage. Lantern's brawn is lowered by two. Lantern's brains is lowered by two. The shadow laughs and, the t and tips his hat. Rather impatient, are we? I don't mind. Now, why don't you go first? It's time to put your new abilities to the test. You miss, Taro. Lantern summons a will-o'-the-wisp. Lantern summons a will-o'-the-wisp. And again. You look to Oz nervously. Oh, I get to pick who, right? Um, what does August do? Onslaught. Deals low damage times. Move works, but additional hits are less likely. Raises brawn. Additional blah, 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 blah. Fight back. Sniff. So I just have to roll a four. Aha. Hey, not bad. Okay, so that worked. He's almost dead. So I just have to roll a five. Aha! Well, this guy should be dead, right? Um. I'm assuming because he's undead, he's dead. So he I can't hurt him. Roll a nine, have to roll an eight then. Aha! Heck yeah. 
Okay, August. Onslaught again. That's a roll of five. No. Oh. Hey, not bad. Oz, it's up to you again. <laughs> the lantern shatters and a geyser of ghostly light spills from the broken glass. With a wail, the shadow shields his face from the flash and just like that disappears. Today's the last day, Mike. I'm moving to Seattle. Her last day? But the season hasn't wrapped. Debbie can't just leave. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want you to quit. Not because of me. You know I can't do this without you. If you go, I go. Oh man, don't be like that. You gotta hold down the fort, Kay. Turning away, Debbie reaches into her backpack. Here, I want you to have this. Debbie holds out a small box wrapped in festive paper and ribbons. A tag notes, to the host I owe the most, is taped to the side with a little heart. Cheesy. It's a bit early for gift exchange, Debs. Yeah, I'd rather save on shipping. Mike takes the gift and slides it open. Inside is a simple red cap, horns sewn to the crown. The embroidery is not the best, and it was hell finding matching thread, but I had fun thanking it. You made this? After examining the hat like it's some sort of rare specimen, Mike twirls it around and plops it onto his head. I love it! Eh, decent at best. Debbie playfully elbows the host's shoulders and cracks a grin. Tossing the gift box aside, the two hug. There's a moment of ease before Debbie swats the red cap off of Mike's head and catches it in her other hand. Can I get an outro? 
like on the spot? She hands a hat back. If you got one, call me King Tut, cause that's a wrap. Now close the casket and watch out for spike traps. <laughs> yeah, you still got it. Raise hell for me, okay? A bright green hand shoots out from the shattered lantern. It slaps down and grabs a mossy headstone. Madhouse drags himself out through the dirt, gasping and coughing up ectoplasm. His cap is gone. He's okay! I'll, uh, give you some space. You brush past the two cryptids, your boots kicking up pedals as you run to the phantom. Don't look at me! Mike recoils as you approach, shielding his face from your prying eyes. You turn around. What am I gonna do with you? You could smash your phone. That'd be the smart move. I wouldn't dream of it. Are you hurt? No, you can thank Team Fido for that. That's a relief. I shouldn't have ditched y'all. I thought I was done for. How'd you get your body back? I did some self-reflecting. Looks like Granny was right. But don't go thinking y'all are getting rid of me just yet. Not before I learn bass guitar. Did you always have horns? On my hat, sure, but that asshole stole it. You mean this hat was stolen? You hold out a crumpled red cap, bleeding ectoplasm. Madhouse hesitates before taking it off your hands. It's covered in dirt and wolf hair. Thanks for saving it. <laughs> Yours could use some work. It's good to have you back. Happy to be here. He points to the two cryptids. Hey! Gentlemen! Thanks for keeping an eye on Meatball over here. I hope he didn't cause any trouble for you. Sadly, it seems our efforts were in vain. I'm not buried here. That's the nickname that's stuck? You can do better. Yeah, that's fair. I'll keep workshopping it. Let's get out of here. We'll meet you at the car. Nice moves back there. I, uh, I did read your note. Sorry for being a jerk about it. Oz doesn't budge. Like he gives a rat's ass. Wanting to help people is pretty admirable. God knows his county needs it. Is that why you wear that thing? Yeah, my mom would flick my nose whenever I'd bite or gnaw on the furniture. It left me flinchy and never fixed a thing, but at least it wasn't a muzzle. Oz gives the wolfman a hefty pat on the back. Do you need a ride home? It's a hell of a walk. Oz thinks a moment before shaking his head no. The howler slinks away, disappearing into the dense woods beyond. Looks like Madhouse Mike wishes to spend time with you. Would you like to view this hangout now? Eh, I guess. You know, I never realized I could take my hat off. I figured it was fused to my freaking head. This opens a new realm of possibilities. You think that they could make clothes for ghosts? Sure, but how does an outfit die? Shrinking in the dryer. Or whatever it is that you're wearing. <laughs> like yours is any better? <laughs> hey, I'm a craft store Halloween prop. What's your excuse? Did you design the look yourself? Nah, it was a collaborative effort with my producer. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. It looks good on you. I like it. It perfectly contrasts with my slick, sickly green flesh. I just gross myself out. Being dead fucking sucks. Shocking, I know. Are you really dead? Sure, things certainly changed, but you're still here. You just look different. Eh. Breathe that cool, refreshing night air. Feel the earth beneath your boots. Ah, wait. I can't! Point taken. Now, if you could, would you want to live again? I don't want to think about it. 
I'd rather focus on what I have now. Which is a friend? Whoa! That's a bit much, isn't it? Overkill, really. I, I mean, I, I, have I earned it? Sure, I don't see why not. <laughs> You're gonna regret that. Ah, damn it. Phew. I'm exhausted. Like, really exhausted. Like, really, really. You scoop Bathouse out of the air and hold him in your arms. He's soft, slightly gummy to the touch, and chilled like a scoop of soft serve. A jolt of electricity buzzes up your arms as you hand brushes his cheek. What's this guy made out of? Mike, I really meant it. He fell asleep just like that. So much for being a ball of ferocious energy. The drive home is rather cramped. The side door of Edith's shop creaks open, a lumbering howler ducking inside, rubbing his sore arm. <laughs> you're late. Edith flicks on the lights. <sighs> and you're empty-handed. <sighs> oh, relax. It's no wonder you're going gray. <clears throat> I was talking about your hair, Ozzy. There's a mess downstairs. I need you to clean it up. I'm going to bed. Help yourself to the cheesecake in the fridge when you're finished. After wishing everyone a good night and a quick shower, you collapse into bed. Atlas shoots you a text. Want to call before bed? Mm. I guess. What's up? Heard you and Augie lurked around the graveyard. How'd it go? We found a hat and punched a lamp. It was good. Sure? You don't sound too good. I don't know. I'm starting to feel out of place. How so? Take a wild guess. Hey, nobody thinks of you that way. Cryptid or not, you've got a place here. And you've got me. Besides, you could always ask August to bite ya. That sounds painful, so no. Good. Because he got all upset when I asked. Something about responsibility, family tradition, or whatever. I was like, so you're saying that I'm not part of the family? Then he was like, no, you would probably die. What a killjoy. You stifle a yawn. Well, I'm gonna head to bed. Sweet dreams. Good night, Atlas. You set your phone aside and close your eyes. Resting on your nightstand. Madhouse yawns, throwing his arms above his head for a big stretch. He leans to one side, then to the other, and slides off his office chair. It's getting late. He walks through the messy office and looks down at his feet. He's missing a shoe. What's his feeling? There's a drumming in his ear and a dull ache in his back. His chest rises and falls in this mechanical rhythm. Breathing? Yeah, that's what they call it. Breathing. Madhouse staggers to the bathroom. He shoves the door open and slaps his hand to the wall and feels around for the light switch. There's a stranger in the mirror. A ghastly, hideous creature made of meat, hair, and bone. It follows his every move and thinks his every thought. A shriek escapes the young man's throat, terror twisting his stomach to knots. He staggers back, clutching his head in his hands, and collapses. To be continued in part two. Seems we've hit the end of this update. Thanks for sticking with the champ. <laughs> the second half of this chapter won't be too far off. And uh, thanks for keeping an eye on Atlas for me. <laughs> now you take care, all right? Well, that was the end of what is currently available for Cryptid Crush. So. I reaffirm my stance that I like August. He's hot. <laughs> he's also hot as a human. He looks a little paunchy, but he's cute. I would 10 out of 10 date. Well, 10 out of 10 would attempt to date. Actually, I would probably just sort of like look at his in his general direction and then be like, oh, wow, he's hot. 
And then I would never approach him because I'm that shy. Anywho. So, what did you guys think? <laughs> the fight. I hate the dice mechanic. I hate it. It's not hard. It's actually pretty easy to get the hang of, but oh my god, I hate it. <laughs> but I mean, that's what you get when you're playing this game, I guess. So, eh, I can't complain too much about it. Plus, I got to play with August, uh, Oz, you know. So, yeah. Woo! We also got to see the human form of, um, Madhouse. Well, Mike, I guess. And, um, I guess he's also getting his powers back. Sort of? Kind of? Um, curious what Edith is doing. I mean, it's probably true that she is conducting some experiments. She kind of looks like that mad, uh, doctor type person. But we'll have to see. Anyway, so write down in the comments what you thought of this, um, this update. And, you know, any little discussions that you want to have. And thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Cryptid Crush yourself, you can find it over on Itch. And you can find a direct link to it from the uh, Cryptid Crush Twitter page, which I will link down in the description. And if you would like to support the project, um, you can you know subscribe to their Patreon, which I will link down in the description. And you'll get early access to Cryptid Crush builds, and you'll get the you know you'll get to see the next part of this you know chapter. And um, yeah, I think that they also have like development stuff. Like, um, like images and stuff like that that are that they're gonna add and stuff. So, you know, you can subscribe. And also, they have a Discord. So, if you want to discuss the visual novel with them or with other people playing it, you can subscribe to their Discord. I don't know why I'm pointing at it with my finger because you can't see that. <laughs> um, they also have a website. And yeah. So, I guess that's it for now. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.